obviously, on paper, AFC Wimbledon should be winning, but I I would honestly be happy with a 1-1 with a replay at Plow Lane. Ha! <laughs> handball. Hey. I mean, so I'm, a, I'm 10 seconds behind, boys. That's a handball and a half. Come on now. Yep. Fuck! That's a fucking handball, man. That's a handball, man! That's ridiculous. I mean, I can't complain too much because AFC Wimbledon have just not been... They haven't been on their day today, but... That was clear as day. I mean... Come on. To be fair, I don't think that, you know, Mark Robinson was taking this lightly. And I don't think the team was taking it lightly before the game. When it came down to the game itself, they just weren't on the same page. I'm not going to go as far as to say that AFC Wimbledon underestimated them per se, but they certainly did not play up to potential. AFC Wimbledon didn't really possess that cohesiveness that, uh, you know, that chemistry that we're used to seeing from them. Uh, you know, the first 10 minutes or so, they did decent. Uh, it was kind of a midfield battle, both teams giving away possession every now and again. But when they were on the ball, when they didn't give away possession in the midfield with, you know, Anthony Hardigan playing a wayward pass or two or, uh, you know, the likes of Guinness Walker or um, Henry Lawrence in the outside mids or outside uh, wing back positions, you know, they played decent. They put a couple of crosses into the box. They looked threatening. They weren't able to win a lot of the, the aerial duels in the final third. Uh, Boreham Wood won probably most of the headers in, in uh, the defensive final third. And in the midfield, too, they won most of the headers, too. So that's uh, one knock that I have against AFC Wimbledon. They just weren't uh, imposing enough in the aerial battles. And then, you know, the chances we did have in the first 20 minutes or so, we had a couple. Uh, we knocked it around, you know, strung together a few passes around the third minute and then played Ollie Palmer, who actually hooked out wide a little bit. And then he tried to take a, a shot towards goal, but it was uh, shanked a little bit there. Um, and then Luke McCormick, who played very well throughout the game, uh, kind of was a little bit quiet in around the 60th to 70th minute before he came off. But that's because, you know, he started to have some tired legs out there. He put a great shift in Luke McCormick. I uh, did have an opportunity in the 20th minute where, you know, he had plenty of space on a, on a counterattack, took four touches from the right, right mid position all the way to the center, tried to take a touch with the left foot. Uh, didn't shank it per se, but didn't really put the shot with enough fizz, and it did go a couple yards wide of the post. Uh, those are the only two real clear-cut chances in the first half. And dare I say, the two only clear-cut chances of the game, lads, I thought AFC Wimbledon, after you know conceding that first goal, in which really was pretty preventable, uh, you had Ben Hennigan kind of put, uh, putting a little bit of pressure on, a little uh, not going too high on the press, but he was going a little bit high. Uh, but Neskinus Walker was already a little bit high, you know, kind of having a tendency to go high even as a center back. You know, he's an outside back playing as a center back, so he was a little bit uh, positioned a little high. So with Ben Hennigan coming up high, the, the line itself was high. Not only that, though, but Nessa Guinness Walker was way too central. Or I should say too central. He was central, but a little bit towards the left of the pitch when the ball was on the other side of the pitch, and there was a through ball played in between Ben Hennigan and Nessa Guinness Walker. And um, Hennigan tried to recover, but it was a nice first touch there from... Uh, from Marsh or second touch to take it to his right and place it. To be fair, uh, Marsh was dangerous all game until he came off. I mean, when he was on the 1v1, he took his man on. He played across it, and at times he put himself in good areas. He was really dangerous. And Marsh, fair play to him. And uh, Bowden, who I thought was going to be on the score sheet, didn't receive the ball nearly as much for Borum Wood. But when he did, he played a good hold up. He won a couple of aerial duels, drew the foul a couple of times, and Fair play to Boreham Wood up top, and fair play to Boreham Wood throughout the game. They played well defensively, and AFC Wimbledon really did not have an answer for them. Uh, one 
particular reason why is that again they haven't they didn't exhibit that cohesiveness you know every now and again they would make uh runs on the outside but afc uh, afc Wimbledon played the uh the overlapping runs a little bit too late there are a couple of times where Rodoni would make an outside overlapping run but instead of a through ball being played it would it would be played a little bit too late and to his feet rather than through and there were a couple of moments where Paul Osu uh, was pretty high. He took a couple of touches toward the uh, center mid position. And there was one instance in which McCormick was making a run from the center, attacking mid position, hooking out wide. But instead of playing a through ball to him, Paul Osu saw that run late. And it ended up, uh, uh, you know, didn't even go to Luke McCormick. It ended up being dispossessed by the center back because the pass was played too late. And then another instance about 10 minutes later... Uh, you know, the middle of the second half, Oli Palmer was trying to make a uh, incisive run down the 18, and uh, and instead of playing a through ball in between two center backs, he actually tried to play it to Oli Palmer's feet as Palmer was already, you know, had his his back away from Osu and his chest towards goal, trying to make that run. Osu played played it to Oli Palmer. Oli Palmer had to try to turn around and. And hold it up, but then the center back nicked it off of him, and then Palmer was like throwing his hands in the air, frustrated. And to be fair, Ollie Palmer, he wasn't too much of a factor, but he didn't receive the ball too often. You know, every now and again he would make runs, but he didn't receive in the air, frustrated. And to be fair, Ollie Palmer, he wasn't too much of a factor, but he didn't receive the ball too often. You know, every now and again he would make runs, but he didn't really get too much service. And um, the frustration, I think, was justified from Ollie Palmer. I think we engaged in a lot of empty possession. Uh, you know, when we were in their half and in their final third, we would play this V shape where, you know, the uh, the outsides of the V would be the players on the outside, like Jack Rodoni, Paul Osu, Ayuba uh, Sal, whoever was on the outside. And then we would play back to the center mid, uh, you know, Woodyard or Hardigan. And then we play back to the outside, back to the center mid in this V shape. And we wouldn't make that incisive through ball. And every once in a while when we tried to play that incisive through ball, like I said, we didn't have that cohesiveness. Uh, we didn't know when to play that ball. Whenever we tried to play the through ball, the through balls were played a little too late. And, you know, Borum Wood just were able to hold us off. And we didn't create a single clear-cut chance in that second half. And if you take a look at the stats, 10 shots, one on target for AFC Wolden. About maybe five shots or so were, you know, from quarter chances in which we didn't really take. You know, Paul also had a, an instance in which he tried to win a header from an overlapping run from Rodoni. One of the only overlapping runs that actually uh, panned out, it was, I think, McCormick that played him on the overlap, and then Rodoni played across with his left foot to also That was just in the first half, and then also got underneath it. Those are the only three real clear-cut chances. The second half didn't really see any, and um, it's sad. I mean, 69% possession to 31 with 397 passes to 186, you'd think the AFC Wimbledon would have put a stamp on the game. But that wasn't the case. And um, I'm honestly rethinking life. I can't be asked going to the Morecambe game next week. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, yeah. You never know what you're going to get with AFC Wimbledon. Life is like a box of chocolates with AFC Wimbledon. Um... Yeah, and I hope they turn things around because I'm going to be going to the UK um, in late February and I'm going to be watching one Premier League game. I think it's going to be uh, West Ham v. Wolves. Uh, I'm going to be watching one championship game midweek, probably the day after I arrive there. Uh, I think maybe I'll go to the pub. If I don't watch a game, I'll go to the pub and watch a game or two uh, over there. But the games I do plan on watching are Wigan away, March 5th. And Lincoln at home, March 12th. So stay tuned for that. I'll be uh, bringing my my hefty, nifty GoPro. I shouldn't say hefty. My nifty GoPro. And perhaps I'll uh, I'll put the GoPro on a stand and I'll bring a microphone. I'll interview people like, uh, like other vloggers do. But um, yeah, March 5th away at Wigan. March 12th at home against Lincoln City. Mark that on your calendar because I'll be going. That being said, disappointing. And that's an understatement. So hopefully next week or next time we play against Morecambe, 
it'll be a different story. That being said, <sighs> see you guys on the next one. All right, boys, now it's that part of the video where I get a bit of a perspective on the fans' opinions on the game, and I don't think it's going to be too pretty, especially in the Facebook group, uh, but I'll read through it anyway. I'm starting to, uh, to kind of empathize with those people that are naturally a little bit more pessimistic because I have a feeling that things are starting to turn for the worse here. Starting off with James Whitaker on the AFC Wimbledon's fan group. Hang me out to dry, but I'll say this. Robinson has certainly changed since he first joined us. I fully believe he's totally lost his way and lost the changing room. Our squad is wafer thin in terms of experience, and today's performance and results shows even the most blinkered of Wimbledon fans where we really are. Proud to be a Womble this evening? No, I'm certainly not. I'm embarrassed. And as for the MK franchise, they'll be awaiting us to turn up uh, Tuesday evening and roll over and have our tummies tickled. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, and Oxford manager Carl Robinson will absolutely be laughing his head off this evening, and so he should be. Some may think this is, this type of result is acceptable and then rave on about fans' ownership and we've our own ground, but I, for one, am not in that category, and I prefer to see our players play and give absolutely everything in the Wimbledon shirt. Well, holding nothing back, that's, that's for sure, but, you know, I've always been positive uh, with AFC Wimbledon, and, you know, I've always said trust the process, but now... AFC Wimbledon is starting to devolve into something that's something that is sort of expected when you're talking about a fan uh, fan owned club and that we don't have all the resources to get players that we need. However, I don't know why my camera's auto focusing. Uh, however, it's gotten to the point where even with the players that we have, you know, the the squad that he mentioned is wafer thin. Uh, even then, we're not putting the performance that we should be putting. Uh, we're not making use of the limited resources that we have uh response from mark lead and the clear thing to me is that we must sign some proper players in the window not 18 19 20 year olds but proper experienced pros just like we did when we survived in div 2 you know the beginning of the season and actually the end of last season uh it proved to us that youth can truly excel if youth have the cohesiveness and the chemistry with one another but Teams will naturally adapt, right? And teams will, will be able to gather intel on us. And, um, you know, we cannot keep up this youth-only philosophy uh, for years and years and seasons and seasons on end. Uh, I didn't really make mention of this it, the previous few times that I've said that, you know, we're going through the process and that, you know, we need to trust the process. However, we cannot undergo this, uh, this youth-first type of mentality for too long. Ross Palmer, a lot of throwing the toys out the pram here. To, I'm not entirely sure what that means. <laughs> it's British slang. One loss and suddenly it's Robbo outcries. Ridiculous. We only had one fit center back in Boreham Wood or a side flying high in their league. Giant killings happen as we as we have frequently proved ourselves. Fair play to Boreham Wood. Let's just dust it off, get behind the lads for the next game and move on. That's the positive mentality that I usually like to possess after a game i'm sort of in the middle right now i try not to be in the middle because you know especially with a team as you know with fans as passionate as afc Wimbledon fans are you typically want to lean one way or the other you don't want to be right in the middle because if you're right in the middle if you're uh, centrist change isn't really going to happen uh where i lean today is a little bit more on the negative side i do think that today's performance was fairly disappointing and that we shouldn't really you know use any excuses and that you know yeah, we'll let we could let let the dust settle, but at the same time, we need to enact change. We need to sign at least one person in the transfer window that can really, uh, you know, shape up the play. Preferably a uh, you know a veteran, preferably a 28, 29, 30 year old veteran that has seen it all, and that could uh, you know assist us in times of need. That being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the game. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of our outlook going forward. Is it still positive or is it starting to look a little bit more negative? Stay awesome, everybody. See you guys next time.